Turn with me tonight to the book of Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, I will begin to read from verse 1. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot went with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock. Somebody say Abraham was very rich. In other words, a life of faith is not necessarily antithetical to being blessed. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. He went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Lord also, who went with Abraham, had flocks and had and tents. That means at some point in the journey, you cannot separate who is the father of faith from who walked with him by the force of possession. Because Lot also, and in case you think it was just small, the next verse will make you to know the weight of Lot's possessions. The, you have jumped the verse. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. There was strife between the earthmen of Abraham's livestock and the earthmen of life, li Lot livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my earthmen and your earthmen, for we are brethren. It's not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. That's a man of peace. He didn't say, my will first. Every position I'm going to take is going to happen by the position you take. Lord lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere. Somebody say, well watered. Can you imagine how the plants of that area will look? Very green. Well watered. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, Sodom and Gomorrah look like what? The garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zohar. Then Lord chose for himself all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east and they separated from each other. And you know the story? Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Lord dwelt in the cities and the plains. Pleased his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. But their land was exceedingly watered and fresh. Anybody that tells you that people that are against God cannot be green has not read this Bible enough. They will be green, they will be fresh. In fact, many a times, they reflect wealth and sustenance more than the people. God had to tell, Abraham took the hill country. Lord took the valley. And the valley was described like the garden of God. How many of you remember the garden of God? The garden of God is Eden. Eden too was a well-watered place. If you read Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says a river was passed, came out of it that broke into four. 
He had trees planted. Everything was well watered. When you look at Eden at some point and look at Sodom at some point, there was no difference. When you look at Abraham at some point and look at Lot at some point, there seemed to be no difference between the person keeping faith and the person that is not that is just picking by sight. Are you with me? That's why after I've told you that being green is a description of being blessed and having the life of God, I need to tell you it can become a description of deception. Like the garden of God. But it's not the garden of God because the men of the place were exceedingly sinful and they did not fear God. Are we together, church? If you're a good student of the Bible, there is a language the Bible used when Israel goes into idolatry. It will say, they worship their idols under every green tree. How many of you have seen that language in the Bible? Let me give you one. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2. God spoke to Israel. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you dispossess served their gods. What are those places? On the high mountains, on the hills, and what? Under every green tree. They don't worship their idols under dry trees. They worship their idols under what? Flourishing trees. Trees that are full of life. You see that description throughout the Bible. Let me give you a, num a, a number of them. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 23. They also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, wooden images on every high hill and what? Under every green tree. It was always a description of the abode of idolatry. Why? Because Psalm 37 verse 35 Psalm 37 verse 35 said, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading it himself like what? Like a native green tree. I've shown you the righteous in the course of this program in Psalm 52 verse 8. The Bible says, I am like a green olive tree. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. As it can become a description of the righteous, it can be a description of the wicked. Are you following me? The, the flourishing can, can be a description of the wicked too. I've seen the wicked in great power. And they are spreading themselves like a native green tree. Why do we even like green trees? It communicates splendor, flourishing. Have you ever seen a tree that is full of leaves? It looks healthy, it looks strong. It communicates splendor. Another thing it communicates is it brings shade. There's shade. Who is not attracted to shade? Who likes to be exposed to, to the elements? Bring shade. It brings covering. For example, in the book of Jonah chapter 4, verse 5 to 10, when Jonah was angry with God, why did you send me? Do you know the first thing God did for Jonah? Jonah chapter 4 from verse 5. Verse 5. Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city. He made himself a shelter, sat under it, under a shade, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord prepared a plant and made it to come over Jonah. That it might be shed from his head to deliver him from his misery. Jonah was very grateful 
for the plant. Uh, he was looking for the destruction of Nineveh, but immediately the plant came. The plant gave him what? Shade. And he said, ah, I thank God. It does not matter whether you are a Christian or you are a non-believer. When life is good, you know it. Isn't it? Ah. Because, you know, some of the shade. I was talking to somebody this afternoon. He said, Pastor, you know what? My two children are British citizens. I saw the shade in that conversation. So I said, hey, Atakumo Salamote Michiwa. Said they are British. Which means, Boburuton, I can take them out of this place. Why are we struggling to go and give birth abroad? Shade. It's not spirit. Even if you have such opportunity and something tells you don't go, how many of you instantly feel it is God? What do you feel is trying to hinder you? Satan. Shade is the prophet in his anger. When he saw shade, he knew. All this is your anger if, if God just give you one or two things. Say, so I'm tired of Nigeria is a lie. You are tired of the mystery. If you get a shade, ask people who travel, do you know what they tell me? There's, if I had a chance, I would just be going and coming. Why do, you, why do you want to be displaced in a country? One of my guys in Ukraine, there's crisis. I said, there's plane. You can come back home. I said, where are you now? I said, I'm in Poland. Next time, where are you? I said, I'm in Germany. Where are you next? I'm going to France. He does not mind to be the dispersed. <laughs> because there is a shade. You can come here. Are you following me? Jonah was very happy. But what did the Bible say? When God wanted to show him that his position was so, it was so situational. But as the morning dawned, God prepared a worm. You are rushing. So it damaged the plant and it withered. Uh-huh. And it happened when the sun arose, God prepared a vehement his wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head. So that he grew faint. And Jonah, Jonah, he wished death for himself. He said, it's better for me to die than to live. Verse 9. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plan? And he said, it is right for me to be angry. Even to death. The question is, did he know how the plant came? Talk to me. He said, I'm even, I have right to be angry. He didn't water the plant. If he was the one that watered the plant, what, will, what level of anger will he have? If he was the one that planted it, he didn't plant it, he didn't water it. Why was he angry? He just enjoyed the shade. And the Lord said, you have pity on the plant for which you have not labored. You have not made it to grow. It came up in one night, it perished in one night. And you're angry. Should I not pity Nineveh? That great city in which are more than 120,000 people which cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock. God said, See, me have invested so much time in Nineveh. That's why I'm not destroying it. You, you are angry for a plant. You don't know where it came from. But that's not your headache. What was your headache? The shade he gave you. There are some of you here that does, that does not even want to know whether your company is violating the law of the land. As long as they are paying a salary, they give you shade. You can even come to me, Pastor, and pray for me. Well, this must not go down. Even if you are the one supplying Boko Haram. There are some people in this church, anytime I want to say that your workplace is not divided, somebody will tell me, ah, Pastor, one man so will be in your major metal line, it won't be. That's our answer. The shade can make them forget the ethics. Uh, don't be angry. I know where you came from. It's from your great grandfather, Jonah. He does not mind as long as there is shade. Are you still with me? 
That was why the pagan were attracted to the green trees. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 2. While their children remember their altars and their images by the green trees on the high mountain. That is, was talking about the pagan. Give me verse 1 and verse 2, Jeremiah 17. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with a, pen, with a point of a diamond is engraved on the tablet of their heart, on the horns of their altar. Why their children remember their altars and their wooden images by green trees on the high hills. When a tree is green, if a life is sweet and good, you don't need spiritual vision to know. How did Lot choose Sodom? He saw a vision. Eh? Lord lifted his eyes uh -uh. and saw a where. Well, say, Pastor, don't spiritualize this thing. I know a good life. But what his eyes did not see is the type of men who are there. God must help us that we will not live our entire life just on sight. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said God must help us that we don't live our entire life. There are too many people. Some of you, you are on campuses. You see all those boys. They will come. Every, recently on campuses, they are banning students from using cars. Because the cars that professors cannot use. It's become a scourge. They banned it in the one school in Nijego in Augusta recently. The VC had to organize with SARS to help him pick the boy because they were harassing. They were. You know, there are some cars when you see them, you don't need to be spiritual. This is not a car, this is a machine. That's what one woman told me years ago. She said, Not a machine. The way the engine will rev, you yourself will know. There are some ones that well, he bought a car. There are some where you see it. But your eyes don't see what the men of Sodom do. Sodom was so against nature. That their men lost it for men. But their grounds were well watered and their trees were very green. The enemy wanted to trap Jesus with what he trapped Lot with. Luke chapter 4 verse 5. And he took Jesus to an iron mountain. And in the moment he showed him all the glory all the glory he didn't show him the the depravity of men that god wanted him to see to save what did he show him all the glory luke chapter 4 verse 5 who is there luke chapter 4 verse 5 the devil taking him to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. What did he say to him? All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever. Somebody say, can give it. Who told you Satan can't give money? That's his own territory now. But Jesus said to him, what was Jesus' answer to him? Therefore, if you worship before me, all will be yours. Just answer, get it behind me, Satan, for it is written. Because when you are looking at what is written, you don't just look at the word as how it appears. You see the spirit behind it. Are you following me? The word of God gives is a light onto your path. It shows you, forget all this glory as it's seen. Behind it in Sodom, there are all men exceedingly wicked. Glory to God. Jesus was not trapped. You will not be trapped. The trees became the symbol of idolatry. 
But at the same time, there were symbols of prosperity that God used to describe for Israel. So you must know when they are coming as a message of God, and you must know when they are coming forth as what? As a distraction of hell. Get this message. Micah chapter 4, verse 4. God was speaking to Israel. He said, but everyone shall sit under his vine, under his fig, fig tree. No one will make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Every time God wants to speak to Israel about the prosperity he's bringing to the nation, this is the language God says. God will say, do you know what I will do? When I make you flourish, everyone will sit under his vine. It will give them shade. It will reflect life. It will reflect splendor. Everyone will sit. No one will make them afraid. It is something God uses. But it can become a platform the enemy too uses to distract. I told, when I was trying to advertise this, I said, green is so important to God and it's so important to the devil. Because there are tools through which God describes fruitfulness. And it's a tool through which the enemy brings deception. Because the land of Sodom was well water, like the garden of God. The garden of God is well water. That's what God wants to do. The land of Sodom is well watered like that is the mimicry of Satan. He will do things like, I will show you a lot of, he will sit in the temple of God like is the most high God. I will be like. The enemy never brings an original idea, but it perverts the ideas of God for people. Are you following me? He knows that in God's agenda, flourishing like a tree is divine plan. But it can create something that's a mimicry of it to distract people from God. Are you following me? When God blesses you, God will bless you with gold and silver. Yeah, Abraham was very rich. So I was Abraham was very rich. I pray that there will be some people here, you are rich will not be sufficient to describe you. Amen. <laughs> You know there's a difference. Oh, ah, Allah bless you. Why? You don't have to look at the voice again. You'll be looking at the eyes. <laughs> there is a way the eyes will be turned one. Ah, my Jaso. Abraham was not rich. Abraham was very rich. God will put resources in your hands. Yeah. Because the enemy knows, he, as you said, amen. Now he said, Ah, can he might get them, people? He will go and plant something like that tree. So that when you see it, except God is with you, you will think this is the answer of God. Uh, are you getting what I'm talking about? Because he knows that you are looking for that shade, which is God's promise. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 10. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 10. In that day, says a lot of us, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine. And under his when God is describing prosperity for Israel, he said, This is it. Um, there will be so much covering. We invite your neighbor. You will have your shade. Your neighbor will have a shade. You will not have run to two or three places before you find covering. God will bring you a network of people. There will be a shade around you. You know, so you will sit in your house under shade. Then when, you, when your neighbor invites you, he will invite you to trouble. You know that when I'm going to my neighbor, he's bringing me further covering. That's what everybody is looking for now. Your network is what? Is attached to what? Your network. So you say, show where I know. What you report while I'm at home and go for me. Because the way you are looking, you don't look like Nigerian. Oh, and Pastor Lamo, I want to shade the poor. And I thank God. Do you know why? Because me to have shade in my house. You think that they will come from Lagos if I'm if I'm son that is beating their head. Have shade in your house. Then trust God to put around you people who have shade in their house. 
So you move from shade to shade. Some people don't want to build no shade. They are looking for who has a shade. As God brings somebody to your life too, who will find rest from their labor. Are you hearing me? Am I making sense? Show flow. If you are too tired of the words, yeah, let me see your answer. Ah, I'm tired. I will, we will finish this pure language actually. There is nothing you can do about it. And before Thursday, there will be another set. It's better here now. And that day, the Lord of us, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine, under his fig tree. Let me give you two more scriptures. Isaiah 36 verse 16. Isaiah 36 verse 16. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, make peace with me by a present. Come out to me and every one of you will eat under his own vine and everyone from his own fig tree. And every one of you will drink waters of his own cistern, which means what God has given you as a blessing. Nobody can take it from you. Don't listen to Hezekiah. Make peace with me. And every Israelite will say, I'm not looking for another person's own. God has given me some. How many of you know nobody wants to be a body? And in the plan of God, everybody will have his own vine. Uh, I said everybody will have his own vine. Uh, you know, some people, were, one man was carried to Jesus by four friends. He's mobile, but he's not mobile. He's moving, but he's still paralyzed. So when Jesus said, well, 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 you have found faithful friends, but I want you to be a healthy man. It's a blessing to have faithful friends, but it's a blessing again to be an healthy man. He looked at them when he saw their faith. He looked at the man and said, your sins are forgiven. He said, in the name, he said, he said, I have power. Take up your bed and walk. The man had four faithful friends, but much more than four faithful friends. He had a leg walking. He had a hand that could carry his own body. Are you hearing me? So God will give you a surrounding. He will give you your vine under which you can stay. But yet he will put you in a place where you can find covering too. Jesus did not tell him now that you are healed. Stop having friends. Because if he didn't have four friends who carried him to Capernaum. He will not be able to stand on his own feet. And carry his own bed. Uh, are you hearing me? Let me jump because of time. I want you to know that the enemy is a good mimic. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12 to 15, Apostle Paul, speaking about false apostles, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12 to 15, said, what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire to be regarded just as we are in the things which are boast, they, all, they don't have their own description. They always try to build it like. Every false apostle looks for the validation of a true apostle to be given to him. Because the way Sodom is built is to flourish like it is the garden of God. Are you following me? Every false prophet wants you to hold their word the way you hold your pastor's word. In fact, if you are not careful, they will tell you, hey, hey don't listen to him. I'm not going to answer. Why do you mean 330? You too, you see? So pastor will be preaching. You'll be doing, looking like this to our pastor. Am I sure? They want to deceive you. He said, for such are what? They are what? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into what? Apostles of Christ. No wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing. If his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, so somebody can be Transforming as though he's speaking righteousness and he's a minister of Satan. Are you hearing me? Something can be so green and it's not God. Whose end will be according to their works? Why? Because the enemy is always looking for a way to mimic God to distract men. And I will see it on the sides of the north. And I will be like the most high. Isaiah chapter 14. 
What the enemy has been doing from the beginning is to be like the Most High. Somewhere in the book of Revelation, the Bible said the beast will cause men to make images of the dragon. The false prophet will cause men to make images of the beast and he will give life to it and he will begin to speak. Why? Because he wants men to feel, he wants to challenge the power of creation. He wants to tell men what God can do, I can do. So you don't need to go too far. So that you will stop seeing the greenness of the trees as a blessing of God. You will think it can be derived from another person. I don't need, so that's what he told Jesus. I'll give it to you now. You don't need to stress yourself. I'll give it to you now. It is in my power now. You know, all this uh, pray, pray, pray called letoye. To live right, to live good is not that bad. You take one soap, you bath 3 a.m., another one, 5.25, Magic Code just 5.26. You don't know you're already in bondage because you must not pass 5.26 and your wife by mistake reset the clock. That's the next battle for one week. Momo, pray, will not not go by me, is a lie. If that's what you saw, why did you marry her? It's no great thing if his ministers transform themselves into ministers of darkness. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, that's what the devil has been doing, and that's what he will do to the ends of the time. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 4. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you. Not to be so shaken in mind or be troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by enemies. That they will not come until the, unless the falling away first comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Who is the son of perdition? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as you didn't get it. Opposing God is not even as strong as an effective tool in the hand of Satan as becoming like God. Are you following me? Because when you oppose, then you know that this is a battle. But when you are like, it can be a substitute. Uh, you get what I'm talking about? He will sit as God. In the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And when he paints God for you, he says, your own God, this God is true. You remember when Jeroboam wanted to paint something like God to Israel? He said, going to Jerusalem to worship is too far. Oh, no, no, no. Every time you go to church, pastor will say, stay with God, stay with God, pray, pray in the spirit. You know what, what for divine leading, say divine decree, take a seat. Don't let God lead you. Turn God to a body doubler. God, I need five million. I'll give you 500,000, one week, you bring it. Principle. How many Christians today tell you, I don't know God, but I know principle. You are not knowing, you don't know principle. God has been replaced by a mimic. And your trees will be green, but you'll be worshiping an idol on that. You didn't get what I just said there. Anything that brings you to church that is not making you conscious of walk with God, knowing God, and following God, but is giving you the flourishing of God is a deception. The Christian that God cannot speak to, talk to that person. I just came to this church, you know, you know, you know. I know that in this church, God transformed people to. I'm always very careful, and I still find it very hard. If anybody tells me God called him to raise millionaires, that the reason why the blood was shed, I didn't say they are wrong. I said, I still find it. When Pastor Rotimi was trying to talk to you, you don't understand. 
Because the type of Christianity most of us meet or met is strange. I see pastors. Today they go on Instagram. Everybody is fighting for Instagram. You would think this thing called ministry is showbiz. They will be inside private jet living the life. Living the life. Jesus paid it. Just, it, was well, it was paid for by Jesus. Me and my friend eating breakfast at Sheraton. He looked on me. But because you are so poor and anything that is green must be God. You say, oh, these are the people I want to be following. You are so poor, you have never seen Sheraton. Tobale Magbielo Eko. I drive Koja is Sheraton. If you sleep in Sheraton, you sleep in anything, it's oxygen you will breathe and you come out. The person who saw a vision in his sleep slept on a, on a stone. His pillow was stone. He saw everything. Some people, they will sleep on soft pillow. They will sink into depression. I'm serious. But because the idols we worship, today we now have showbiz of everybody, pastor's wife. I, I watch one on TV, pastor's wife, South Africa. You know those South Africa, they are without restraint. Uh, their nails will look like I was telling Pastor Trisha, I've been fighting Pastor Trisha. He said, look on me. And some of you are angry when you don't see a pastor that do showbiz. Who told you? I see people go caught to Yola. They don't have calling. They don't have calling. Suddenly, have you noticed? If suddenly God calls somebody now, say, I'm sending you to the Mambila Plateau. Where you cannot have an Instagram page. Is he calling? Talk to me. Because the callings we know are the green trees. So, oh my God. Oh my God. Glory to glory. <laughs> Pastor, I saw a picture of two men of God inside playing in Facebook. It is, you know what intrigues me? It's not the picture. It's the comments. Then you see Christian. My fathers, I connect this grace. I'm attached to this lineage of greatness. This is my generation. This is my future. What's wrong with us? When I got born again, I picked the book, The History of America and America and Britain in Prophecy. Behind the book was a man, Armstrong is his name, and it was coming out of a private jet. This is a Christian book. The man finished scripture. He showed us how America and Britain were the lost tribes of Israel. I was reading it with pleasure until I discovered I was reading a false prophet. Who has a private jet? It's a whole movement. They believe that the crown of the, of the king of, of, of Britain is a crown of David. Kingdom. How will he buy private jet if God is not with you? There are so many green trees that are under there. That's where. The, the land you are going into, that's the type of place that the people there worship their idols. Because where they see shade, they sense their God. If this is a shade, it must be our God. God said, that's not, where you will worship will be the place I choose. You don't get what I'm saying. You will be a people that follow the, the leading of my voice, not the sight of your eyes. We are still trapped under that same illusion to today. It trapped lot. It trapped the generation. The question is, will it trap you? Because the enemy has not stopped building types and shadows that look like the garden of God. Are you hearing me? Very green. I've seen the wicked like a green bay tree. So God knows what trees let me tell you something do you know what god did to israel to deliver them from the power of these trees that flourished in the in the promised land god gave them two things one god said from today cost is any man that hangs on a tree 
I will turn the tree to the instrument of judgment of the cost. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Instead of them to be seeing it as the symbol of flourishing, God turned it to the instrument of judgment. He said, anytime you see a man hanging on a tree, that's a cost man. That's why the cross is a tree. You don't get it. So that he would deliver them from the worship of those things. Uh, let me show it to you. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22 and 23. And I will show you throughout scripture that most people who look like God but went out of God hanged themselves on trees. I will show you from Ahithophel to Judas that they hanged on a tree. Absalom, they hanged on a tree. Before you start worshipping trees, because they flourish, because they have greenness, I will show you that that is the place I nail the ones that I curse. Uh, are you following me? God knows what he's doing. May God demystify certain things that we are running after. I'm pointing and say, let me show you what I do with those things. That they are nothing in my hands. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, 22, if a man has committed a sin, the serving of death, and is put to a is, is put to death. You will hang him on a, on a tree. His body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day so that you will not defy the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is a cause. That's what, that's Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 that we quote. For it is written, cause is he who is hanged on a tree. So Christ died on a tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come to us, the Gentile. So when Jesus stood on the cross, the cross itself is a symbol of curse. That's what you used to drive demons out in your house. I have told you what the tree represents. What does it represent? It's a light symbol. But cross is the symbol of Christianity. Now, now somebody's afraid. Cross, go the cross, go near. Yeah, my walk cross, khaki. Who has crossed there again? Paul. Some of you will even use it as bishop. The thing will be sweeping the ground. Cross. Let me just tell you, it's a design, it's an ornament. It's like when you are wearing a ring. It's not what we chase the devil. Are you hearing me? Stop watching too much of Nollywood. I resist you. I resist you. See, I want to say it's a way. You cast the devils in his name. You stand in the place where he stood. You live in him. You command in him. That's what it means to live in his name. Is not stay out of it. Don't come close. Ahitophel, 2 Samuel 16, verse 15 to 23. The king went out with all his household after him. That's David. But the king left ten women, concubines, to keep the house. The king went out with all the people after him and stopped at the outskirts. All his servants passed before him. All the Cheritites, all the Pelletites, all the Gittites, 600 men who had followed him from God passed before the king. And the king said to Itai, the Gittai, why are you going with us? Return and remain with the king. For you are a foreigner and you are also an exile from your own place. Uh, go to verse 22. Let me see. So David said to Itai, go across, cross over the Anita and the Gita and all his men who are with the little ones, cross over. Verse 23. The, all the country wept with a loud voice. There's a place I want to point to. I want to point to because of, I don't want to waste our time. The Bible spoke about Ahito fell in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23. Now the advice of Ahitophel, which he gave in those days, was as if 
One inquired at the oracle of God. When you see Aitofe, the you know his advice. Aitofe just looked at Absalom. Let me tell you what to do. Your father left ten women. Sleep with them before the sun. Everybody will know that anybody that can take his father's wife. Israel will not know the cheat. No, sorry. You know, no be play, you they play. Everybody's heart will become tough because they will know that the battle line is drawn. And when he did it, everybody knew that this is not play, this is rebellion. Somebody must die. Is it that the king dies or this guy dies? Something, the line had been crossed. And in those days when I eat of a gift cancer, it is like you are inquiring from God. You will not know whether it's God that is talking. You know, there are some people, when they are in their strength, you cannot say, this is not God. Are you following me? Because, I mean, you can't, you can't argue with their results. You will see it in his blue zone. You yourself, you will, you will bow. Every time they mentioned Ahitophel, Ahitophel was like a priest. If you go to 2 Samuel 15 verse 12, where did Absalom pick Ahitophel from? Absalom sent for Ahitophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, from a city from Gilo. Where, while he what? He offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy became strong, and the people with Absalom increased in number. Listen, does this not look like God is at work? Where did they summon Ahitophel from? From the place where he's offering sacrifice. Ah, and he's, he's offering sacrifice. And when he gives counsel, it is like... Ah, uh-huh. and if you cannot, do you want to resist God? So every Israelite lined up. That's how we worship under every green tree. Everything that seems to flourish until it becomes the platform of our deception. But what Aitofel was saying, was it from God? Can somebody be coming from the presence of God offering sacrifices to start a rebellion? That's an offering to demons. When David even had a hit of face with them, David cried. He prayed, Lord, help me to defeat the counsel of a hit of face. How many of you know have made things that you know is wrong? But the mouth you will use to say it is wrong is hard. Because the thing is already well established, well accepted. Are you following me? You will have to trust God to help you defeat it. Because it's not simple argument to defeat it. Are you following me? There are prosperity, manifestations of prosperity or wickedness that you cannot win by basic argument. Aitofel is power. Aitofel is an oracle. And Aitofel is not speaking from God. Oh my God. God had to give, David had to send a man called Ushai, who was the king's friend. The, Ahitophel was the king's counselor. Ushai should not have any power against Ahitophel, except that God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So he has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save some. Are you following me? So when Ushai went, for David, he helped to destroy the council of Ahitophel. It was a shock to Ahitophel that in 2 Samuel 17, verse 23, when Ahitophel saw that his advice was not followed, because in ranking, Ahitophel, Ushai, is not much. But when God decides to anoint you in your weakness, you will trample down upon strength. Uh, I didn't hear what I said. I said you will trample down on what you don't have the natural power to confront. Do you know when Ushai gave counsel against Ahitophel, he was not even sure they would follow it. How did I know? Because he quickly sent men. He said, please tell David to run. 
to run. He said, I don't first said this, this is what I said. But I know they will soon change their mind. He didn't know it was not him. It was God using him to defeat Ahitophel. Listen, you will look at yourself and there will be not be more strength, but God will be in you, working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Are you following me? And the power at work in you will be stronger than anything that is against you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How did Ushai win Ahitophel? God defeated Ahitophel's counsel. Some of you say, how do I preach to them? The cars they ride, I don't have. If that is not how we will win. Say, ah, me, yeah, ah, if, if, I, if I go to the presidential law and I meet Tinumbu trying to board this private jet, and me, I'm just working. How can I be God's messenger? You don't know how Ushai can defeat Ahitophel. We don't need to carry their class. Did you hear Ushai? When Ushai was, when the Bible mentioned him as he was running after David, he was Sand was on his head. The first time we mentioned Saitofe, he was coming down from sacrifice. You will see him with splendor. You will never see Ushai with splendor. But when God decides to anoint the base, he will use them to trample over the kings of the earth. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? May what God is doing in your life shake the great powers of this world. And they will ask, where did it get? They look at the disciples. From where did these people have this confidence? Because they were unlearned men. Unlearned men talking to men of the law. People who knew the place where the Christ was to be born. How he's going to die. The prophecy that was prophesied. When he's going to come. They knew all those things. They were discussing with people who don't know those things. They were just fishermen. But the anointing rested upon the unlearned. They confounded the learned. As the anointing landed upon the Ushais, they swallowed the Ahitophels. Uh, are you hearing me? That's the technology of God from the beginning and that's it till now. The Lord will anoint you. The wisdom of God will show forth in your life. Are you following me? Ahitophel saw that his advice was not followed. He saddled his donkey. This is shame. He arose, went to his house, to his city, put his household in under, and what? Cause the sea! Who hangs on a tree? God just showed them the real picture of Ahitophel. Forget all the, he looks like an oracle of God. Forget he's coming down from sacrifice. He's a cosmic man because he has violated the counsel of God. God ended it in a place where it's visible for everybody that this is not blessing, this is cause. May God do something in your life that whatsoever the enemy has been using to deceive you will become glaring that this is the work of the enemy and this is not the work of God. Do you understand? For cause this he who he hangs upon a tree. We must be free from the deception that leads us everywhere we go. Even in church, what do we worship? I don't do card dedication in this church. It's deliberate. Every Sunday, we will be pouring oil on a card they've used for 10 years in America. But because we are so poor, we put it on social media and say, ah, I want a man low church in we can do anything for showbiz today. That's uh, the man of God too. The God of this commission is a multiplier. The God of the God. That's not why I came. To, that's not why Jesus came. Jesus did not come to die for block and cement. Go and build 575,000 sitter. Jesus did not die for block and cement. If people don't come there to hear truth, you are wasting your money and it carries no eternal meaning. At least you cannot say I'm preaching because I have no, I don't have money. Ah, ti debita Allah. But we are not where we were yesterday. Say Pastor Mbino no one, that that's not my problem. I hope they have not used the green trees to deceive you. I've always told people there's one app i don't know why we use it's called instagram because many times you can't some of you why do you go to church it's so bad today the reason why many of our ladies go to church you can't go to a church that does not take picture every sunday it's cheap photography because you can't go to studio
So somebody will come to me, what should I take out? No, my share. Because they know if I start doing it, you will stop, you will start coming. I'm like, I'm a your green, you have picture on my wall or lane. I'm not against your picture, but that is not our mission. That's not why Jesus came. <laughs> Those people, when you are preaching, they will be sleeping. Immediately you say the grace of the Lord, they stand in front of them. I said, God is great. God is green. No. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Celebrate you. I welcome you. I celebrate you. I worship you. For you to come to church. Then you become worker. You have to be, you have to be in depth, because you are a workforce, you have three, three types of shoes red one, green one, black one, stand like, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. All this green tree they are using to deceive you, we will cut it tonight. Cause is it once, and some of these things are symbols of course. It just means that we, they are, those things are so scarce in our midst, they can get our attention. And stop there. If this is where I want to end this, this salmon is a pivotal salmon for green. Because I want you to be green in right order. Yes, sir. <laughs> green, polish, yes, sir. You know why they are talking? Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yes, Don't worry, I will buy camera. We will be showing. Some of you will get more conscious the way you dress, where you know that. There is studio. Judas. That's the only disciple that was not scattered on the night of the betrayer. Every other person scattered. Judas said things are going according to plan. Judas was one of the few disciples who could approach the high priest on the night of the betrayer. He had access into the inner caucus. Judas. When others were running for their life, he was receiving a lot. 30 pieces of silver. He must have sat in his house and said, what? In case this Jesus business ends this night, <laughs> some of my friends have given their houses, their wife, me, I have something to fall back to. Who is the accurate apostle? But a type of sorrow entered into him that the ones who are running for their life did not have. They were running for their life, but they knew that in their heart of heart, they know that he's the son of God. They might not have certain things, but what they have, nobody could take it from them. You could harass them, they could run for their life, but they were never in doubt about who they have believed. And to God, those people were more flourishing than Judas. When Judas, at one day, he just got tired of the 30 pieces of silver. Somebody said, do you know Jesus? Judas even died before Jesus. Jesus was still in trial. The 30 pieces of silver was already over. Judas was already tired. He took it back to the priest. Chewed by the he said, I have, I have betrayed an innocent one. The priest said, what concerns us? Otibo where now? May money not be the only reason why you are living. Now anytime you want to talk about value, somebody said, what concerns us? But man, God, they should see me or die. They don't my family. Kill you. She must say 50,000. iPhone to no need more friend now. And you cannot talk again. <laughs> Judas chewed the money. A day is coming. Judas knew that the money was not his, it was not worth what the office of, of his peace. He bought a field and hanged himself on a tree so that it will be known. Cause the sea. 
who betrays his master though he has money in his account did you hear what i say you can have increase that is cost that's why Abs- judas and absalom do you know absalom let me show you absalom. when you look at absalom he was like who else will be king the Bible says when Absalom is cutting his hair, he only cuts it once in a year. All the men of Israel will come and see it. The Bible says Absalom had no spot from head to toe. Could that be here? You, you are using cream. The spot is Wambe. Absalom. Absalom is an Adonis. Absalom is almost divine. If somebody cannot have this one as husband, uh, uh, is this a human being? And when Absalom wants to kill you, when you want to fall down for Absalom, he will just take you. Don't. Why do you want to bow? Oh God. Oh God. I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. When you see Absalom, you stop breathing. How many of you have seen there? He said, the only problem, but they're born again. But, ah, Jesus. Kilo Shalom, tell you, Jesus, if you babble, whatever. Oh, turn, Absalom, turn, oh, my turn. Everybody in church will now look ugly. Vice versa. Some of you brothers, no boo sister can be fine here. The ones you see every day. I want you to wash us here. When you see this, ah, Jesus. You're there in the ministry, see? It's the devil that wants to take you home. The ministry you cannot have to your brethren. That air of, I'm running, that air of Absalom. Was what hanged him on the tree. He was running for his life. And he got under the oak tree and he took his ear. Cause the sea who is hanged on a tree. Ah. So something can be spotless from head to toe and it's cost. Don't worship under every green tree. Are you hearing me, church? Don't see every can and say, God, what are you doing for me? Lord, they're, they're faithful. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Me and this person. Hey, if people tell you what they do. Eh? Me, I sleep. See, this ministry I'm doing, let me tell you. Ask my wife. It's very easy. I'm not the Lord of this church. I'm not the owner. I'm not the Christ. I preach, I sleep, I pray. God is the one that does it. God, your son said he does not have house rent. Let me tell you, if you come to me and say you have a problem, I tell you, I want to pray for you. I've given you one of the greatest honor. Because I've connected you to the power that is inexhaustible. And nine out of ten, the answer will come. But some people say, Pastor, if you come. Years ago, one of my friends of us there was about to lose his admission, his master's program. He came to my house with anger because I, he lent the money to somebody that gave him promise. And that person lent the money to his, my son. And that one, after he took the money, he ran away. And this is my brother. And he said, tomorrow is my exam. And they will not allow me to enter. So I just needed to tell I know I've lost the admission, but I just want to tell you. I said, you have not lost the admission. Neither and there. I prayed for him. He got back to school the next month. They postponed the exam by one week. Before one week, he got the money. Not from the guy. He's in the U.S. today. Even when I say, God will move on your behalf. Then my pastor, for me, I said, God bless you. You say, I've not said anything. Who should bless you? God bless you. <laughs> She has to be like, if a demon help you, <laughs> I say, God, God, 
I've invoked the power that controls heaven and heart. It is in church that we are, it has become greeting. It's a blessing. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless the works of your hand. In the name of Jesus. God told Israel, your priests will stand and proclaim words. And by those words, they will put my name on you. They will say to you, the Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. The Lord grant you peace. Amen. As they are speaking, they are putting my name. By words, Jacob looked at two sons of Joseph and crossed his hand and said, the younger will be times ten. He didn't see it. He was just speaking. He said, Ephraim will be greater than Manasseh. Joseph said, my father, not so. He said, I know, I know. But that's what God is saying. And he stood. For he spoke and it is done. He commanded and he stands fast. Absalom will cut his hair at the end of every year. It's every year. When he cut, he weighed the hair of his hair. 200 shekels according to King standard. What do you remember? Way. But when he died, he had nothing to show for him. He was armed. Saw the king and his household, the blue zone, but his body was hanged on the walls and the trees of the house of the Philistines, so that it will be known, cursed is he who hangs. On a tree. What is God say? The question is, why will God paint this picture from Absalom to Ahithophel to Judas to Saul? Because the everywhere you read idolatry in Israel, it was always under green trees. They always attract because green trees speak life, and everybody wants life. We are always easily deceived. When what is our aspiration is manifested somewhere. And sometimes we begin to feel God is unfaithful to us. Because that thing is in that place. That's what we say. The grass is always greener on the other side. Some people can't even accept their wife with thanksgiving. Every other person's wife is good except your own. Abba. Now only you say against God. Every other person's husband is a hero. But my own. Go to that person's house too. I want to know Everybody has their own what they don't like. And sometimes when the enemy works on us, we hardly can receive anything God gives us with thanksgiving. A job, you are angry. All, have you noticed our Thanksgiving in any job is three months? After three months, you get to the city. You can to move to the next level. If you know this type of job I'm doing, we, the, my friend that is doing it in Portacot, they are paying her. Are you in Portacot? <laughs> A high pop boy is chasing your hand. We can't stay too long in Thanksgiving. How many of you notice, even when you pray? When you say, one man of God said many years ago he was praising God. He was, thank, he was praying for a power meeting. And God told him, for everything I have done, which one have you thanked me for? So for the next one week, your prayer is thanksgiving. How many of you think that is a very easy challenge? He said the first day, Lord, I thank you. He wouldn't know when he was but Lord, I want to remind Then the spirit will hit you and say, okay, I thank you for the wind. How many of you know we are so blind? We, there are so many things that we should thank God for around us that we are, because we are just, we, we never see the blessing. The blessings we are looking for are the ones on the other side. That guy said, we thank you for the wind. Uh, we thank you for, uh, what was that Jim Reeves song? For the wind. We thank you for the boats. I just showed you in the course of this program 
one of the plagues of Egypt was when the locusts entered Egypt. The Bible said there was nothing green. The beauty of being able to wake up and sing greenery. Do you know worlds that have become metropolis cities now? They are looking for green zones. They are saying, let's, let's, let's just create a place of nature. Nature is a blessing. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. I know Nigeria does not allow us to have nature again. When you build your house, you do... Eh? You do fence. After fence, what do you put on the ground? Eh? Interlock. After interlock, stamp. After you say, you feel my room. When water gathers somewhere in your house, one day a bird is going to come. It's going to begin to drink that water. And you will stay like Solomon and observe nature and see God. Look at the butts of the hair. Then you say, I don't want to see. No butt. I don't want to see. No cattle. I just want to live. Let me tell you, even in psychology, when you live in that way, you have a higher tendency to depression. Immediately you become disconnected from nature, you will begin to have depression. That's why people who live in very advanced societies have more complex life. Go to the village. You know those, those cities, those villages of our father, where people used to sleep in the veranda when the world was normal. What came up? Now, in the heat, you lock your window. The window is other. Because somebody will break your window and still phone. And don't forget that for that's two months salary. So it happens. Ah! Ha! Ah, I am you. Phone. Your life has become equated with. Because you've suffered an Android initial. Or Android phone. And when you buy Android, the iPhone initial. IPhone, iPhone money battery. <laughs> you are just in such a they have the iPhone use, kill them around, you know? Eh? Talk to me. What's the cutting edge thing? Huh? Have you noticed that all the phones you have, if you use them for three years, you can never know the full function? Have you noticed? Some of the phones in your hand like this can, con can control some of your gadgets at all, but you don't know. All that is in your head is WhatsApp <laughs> and Instagram. Hello, hi, how are you? Hi, I like this picture. I hate it. <laughs> Some people are using that thing to make money. Hmm? But you, I, I like this, you're here. Change the picture, change it to right side. Make a panorama. Some of you say, I'm looking for pen. There are notes on that phone. You can't write notes there. So I forgot. I didn't have pyro on me. Take a little shame, boy. Some of you want tap. The only thing is, is big enough for everybody to see. <laughs> it's not because, because there are some tabs that are very big. What your phone can hold, they can't hold. But you know it's visible. How many of you remember the days? When people will go to social graduate with an uh, iPad. It's not a picture of a guy with an iPad. Go and do it now. And he say, I saw it those days. We will carry an iPad. I throw that down. Yeah, you call you. Because they want people to know they have an iPad. Somebody has done it here before. And when you went for that party, it was your auntie's iPad. But it was in your custody. So at least for that 15 minutes. If I tell you you are stupid, you will not agree. <laughs> but life and event has shown to you now that you are stupid. <laughs> yeah, 
Glory to God. Do you get my body tonight? Green predominantly is the color of camouflage which blends into nature. When man saw that he was naked, what did he do? He took fig leaves to cover. I want to show you that's why Jesus calls the fig tree. The fig leaves cover the nakedness of man like his leaves cover the unfruitfulness of a tree. So when Jesus was approaching the tree, it was full of leaves. But when they got close, there was nothing. Oh my God, there are some flourishing trees that are fruitless. For everybody that worship under every green tree, if you come close enough, you see some of them have no fruit. And the way God allows Israel to treat fruitful trees is different from the way they treat any tree. Let me show you that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Are you still blessed? Yes, sir. Go to verse 19. When you besiege a city for a long time, and you are make, while making war against it, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. If you can eat of them, do not cut them down, do not use them in the seed, for the tree of the field is what? Man's food. Only the trees which you know are not trees for food. They don't have the fruit of food. You can destroy and cut. Even if they have all the, so, so all trees are not the same tree. All of them can be green, but there are some that are man's food and man's life. There are some that contribute nothing to the advance of man. So God says, separate. When you see blue some in trees, separate which one must be, must be kept and which one must go down. Because Jesus said, every tree which my father has not planted. Are you following me? Someone say, not all trees are trees. They are trees planted by God to further the life of man, to bring advancement of life. And they are trees that have nothing to contribute, even though they both blue some. So when you see such ones, you can cut them down, use them for siege. Tomorrow I will talk to you. And why? In that Isaiah 14, it says, Since you, Lucifer, has been judged, no woodsman has come against us. Because Lucifer is the one that cuts down fruitful and unfruitful trees together. Are you following me? He doesn't know there are things that must be preserved. Are you hearing me, church? All right. I'm almost through. So Jesus got to that fig tree that would say, ah, you are just green. Nothing on you. But from afar, you are a mirage. Everybody that saw you said, oh, no man. You will stop become, you stop being the symbol of deception from now. That's what he said. No man. Because from afar, when they see you, they know this is not the tree that God has planted. From today, God will give you a sight that from afar, when you see what God has nothing to do with, you will see it plainly. This is not the tree that God has blessed. This is not a tree God has planted. This is not a tree God has planted. He said, Others can be deceived, but you are not. It caused the fig tree. As wicked as Herod was, he killed James, Acts chapter 12. He arrested Peter. Are you following? And when he arrested Peter, he put him in prison. He was doing all these wicked things. God delivered Peter. The conclusion of that story in Acts chapter 12, from verse 20, was that Herod's country was so blessed that he was feeding another country. Wicked Herod, who was vexing the church. 
Now, Herod had been angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord. Having made blasters, the king's personal idea, friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food from the king's country. Who is the king? The killer of James. Who is this king? The king who despised the Christ. Who is this king? The king who arrested Peter and wanted to kill him to please the Jews. His country was blossoming enough to supply food to another country. Uh, are you hearing me? Don't worship under every green tree. Eros tree city was flourishing in his idolatry, in his rebellion against God. It got so bad. They set an oration for Herod one day. When he was talking, they said, oh my God. This is not the voice of a man. This is voice of God. Why? Why were those people talking? Because if they don't praise Herod, and you know when anytime people, anything that holds people's welfare. Have you ever gone to work and people will be talking about their bosses behind them, but when they see them, sir, ah, but I know they see that out. Mude, ah, ejeba inu. Ah, in if bed your money, ah. How many of you what I'm talking about? You know why? It's salary and promotion. They know the man is wicked. But he is in, in his hand is the food of their country. Uh, this is not the voice of God. The man. Uh, Herod. Uh, hey, the most Indian. <laughs> he gave an oration. When he gave an oration, verse 22, what did they say? The people kept shouting, the voice of a God. Lord, you May the Lord deliver you from that cheap life. Yeah. Hey. Somebody said, This is my persuasion. It was Pastor Dudebaka that said many years ago, he got born again and he was a student and he needed money. They were almost chasing out of him like then. He went to MK Abiola because he was a philanthropist, and that one gave him money, and he prostrated, and that was, uh, why, why are you prostrated? Are, are you not a Muslim? Because Muslims don't bow to people. He couldn't tell him he was born again. He, said, he took the money, and said, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, he don't lose admission. But as he went home, his heart smote him. So he said in 1993, when Abiola was contested, God gave him his own chance. At that time, he has come to strength. God will give you strength. Oh my God. He said, Is there no old man in MK Osas? Tell him if he enters this race, he will not come out alive. He came out, he came to pass literally. He said, If he enters that race, that is his death. They came to tell him. He tell them they, they went to do election. Election went peaceful, everybody was shouting. Then they are not the election. They came to him. What shall we do? He said, Ask your God yourself. I warned you. But there was a time he didn't have the boldness. Are you not agree? I know. Ah. I've told you about that, my friend, that wanted to date one girl, and the girl said, "I don't, I don't want to marry pastor." I said, ah, me who she pastor. One man pay me. Today, when I see him still sending broadcasts trying to ch charge people, I say, "Oh, who she pastor?" One man pay. Do you get what I'm talking about? Because their country is fed by Herod. What is also kuso? Jagaba. 2023. Hey, nobody can stop you. When he stops, you will be here. Is that not the way you lie to Jonathan? You didn't have shoe. Now you have shoe. You didn't have this. Now you have shoe. You didn't have cap. Now you have cap. <laughs> when they defeated him, even his own IG went to visit the, <laughs> the person that won elections. Uh, his IG. That's how transient power is. They don't like Carol, though. It's food they like. When they were, Herod was not getting deceived. Uh, maybe I'm a god. God, has, I want to show you a man. Worms don't hit gods. They feed on men. An angel of the Lord slapped him, and worms devoured him. What is God telling Herod? You are a man. That's where I work. Worms feed. They don't even feed on men. They feed on dead men. You are not just a man. You are a dead man. You are not a god. 
You are not a God. Stop, stop living in illusion because your country is flourishing. You are a dead man. God came to a king who just took Abraham's wife and God looked at him. You are a dead man. <laughs> he said, God, how, I, how can I? And you know that when nobody is dead, it has nothing to do with what he has in his account again. You can't say, he said, you are a dead man. He said, but I wish I ran moto come. It's a, a phantom. Immediately he steps out of that existence. That thing does not exist. So what God is saying is, Herod, they will hit that food. But something else will hit you. <laughs> are you hearing me, church? Uh, are you hearing me, church? The wicked has been set in slippery places. I don't have time again. Psalm 73. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I was almost moved until I went to the sanctuary of God and I saw their end. Then I saw that God has set them in slippery places. It's a movement down the road. Don't worship under every green tree. What deceives people in church today is prosperity. Anywhere they see prosperity, they say, but oh no, 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 no. Pastor wrote to me, was telling me something in the office. I don't know how they invited him. They invited him to preach in one church three weeks ago. The man of God brought stones. I don't know how people go to some of those places. Am I like? Brought stones. Then he gave them one by one. At a particular time, you will throw this stone. The church was filled. And you know the things they celebrate. And she be back. When uh, the Dr. Tunde came there, he was working on the like, see now, he's now using a Camry. That's why those type of churches, you know, they, you never see testimony of God just gave us a city. God just got people born again. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the God of this commission. When I came here, I was poor. But when I am here, I am rich. You know what? I just want a contract. I don't work in come. What is happening to you? Who are you? Because uh, if you get me, say, Pastor, I'm understanding. And, and some of you will now go to your church will be angry. I think your testimony be. Uh huh? Funke, last week, when Funke went to her church, before you know what is happening, somebody gave her a car, somebody gave her a phone. I will carry you here to be dancing on the floor because they gave you phone. Are you edgy, hello? When you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. I will dance when you begin to prophesy. I will rejoice when you begin to, when you begin to walk in light. I will rejoice when you have power to say no to the devil. Uh, you get what I'm saying? I will rejoice when you see every green tree and say, this one is an unfruitful one. And you walk past it and you are looking for the vine that God has planted for you. Where you will sit under and rejoice and praise the Lord. That's when I will have joy. I have no greater joy than to hear and see my children walk in truth. That's what the apostles say. If I don't see truth in you, go and buy a car. Me only care. No, God said I ate, go, read Isaiah, I ate robbery for burnt offering. It's not just anything you learn. There are some things that land on God's heart that God turns his back. Because God, anything God sees that you bring to him that God cannot trace that is the one that gave you can never, can never be accepted. All things are from him and for him. So when you are bringing something to God and God cannot trace that it is his finger that brought that thing into your hand and into your life. That's, why, that's the mystery of the tithe. It's an increase of what God gave you, a portion. Which means God knows it because God is the one that gave it. So when it's coming, when it's not a tithe of it, when it's not ten, God knows. And some people think they can deceive God. So along, Egba, iti mo muwa eno. Mo, no, no, Jayekba, three percent not two. He knows what he gave you. That's why a widow can give a mite and it will clap for him, and you can give riches and it will walk past you. Do you know why? He's not looking at what you gave. He's looking at, at the proportion of what he gave you. He knows what he gave you and he knows what you should do. And in Jesus' name, we will walk in a, a, appropriately according to what he has given us. Uh, are you hearing me? 
I love justice. I ate raw beef from burnt offering. Don't just bring anything. In Ezekiel 28, verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 28, verse 1 to 10. Are you blessed today? Oh, the Lord, we are not us. All those mimicries of Satan that looks like that is a true blessing of God. That is green, that is alive. Is the blessing of God that make it rich and that's no soul. It is not God's will for you from, to be moving from one trouble to the another. To the another. Say, Grandma, look, she's sick, 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 she's God wants you to eat your bread and drink your water in quietness with thanksgiving. You will have your bread. Uh, I bless you. I said you will have your bread. Yeah. You will not live by the bread of others. Yeah. You will sit down. You will take your bread. I said this month, this month, I want to discipline myself. All I want to spend for food. It's 25,000. It's your bread. Somebody can say you are stingy. You are the one that knows why you are holding your money. And you, might, and, somebody, and you can live a life where somebody will give you 100,000 and you will be angry. That same month, where they will give you 100,000 to feed, but with many insults. That's the day you will thank God for your 25,000. You used to eat. Even though it's 101, why in the morning then? You know what I'm talking And then the night, just a cup of tea. You will thank God. You will lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. When I first entered my first house in Ibadan, it had no cutting. I was giving a praise. No cutting. I had rug and bed. I put it there. I looked at the house. Lord, this is a tiddy bedroom flat with my room having his own convenience if i go there today as a king but i received it it was a mansion i started hosting people there you don't have a house come and stay here and i said one room and as i was hosting people he was expanding me. i can't describe the house for you let me just stay there let's stop the discussion there but it was a three bedroom flat <laughs> When I look at the rooms <laughs> today, my mind says, eh? <laughs> I didn't mind though. My sister came there, she started crying. Ah, it be long soon. I said, yes, yeah, my house. She went, she bought all this type of nylon, you know, those nylon uh, cuttings. She put it everywhere, including the places that does not deserve cutting. And it was green cutting, the rug was green, the painting was green. Then I called it green room. It was, everything just looked cozy. I will even, I will deliberately allow everything, I will shut the door, I will light light to make the whole place green. When God bless you, you will celebrate every step. You will celebrate every progress. Now, some of you, even when God has blessed you, are still angry. Elaine, you see, my God, so, was everybody lived there? Say, aerodrome. Ah, Pastor. Hey, hey, Erodro. The type of light I have in my estate, some from all those big estates, they don't have it. I, I just thank God. Eh? I will not yab you publicly. I heard you are almost running away, but that is all I will say. He used to glory in something that's far. <laughs> I did not hear him. I only answered him. <laughs> May God, when I got my first rover, it was a rover. I told myself I can't give this car out. I said I like him more than Benz. 
I receive it with thanksgiving. It was manual. But I said, ah. When I got another car, I told mama, I said, ah, the motorway. Mu understand it. I understand it. He understands me. Ah, because it was something God used to break something in my mind. That is something God will give you that will break a limit. It's like a firstborn that opened the matrix. When he opens the matrix, any other thing can come after. Today, when I see the car, I say, ah, whatever. Because I have seen Benz. I have seen Toyota. For the time, I didn't know. I traveled an entire year last year without taking any of my cars. So, when I go to different places, people see different cars. Benz here and come. Oh, and Lee. I under here and come. Oh, and Lee. Toyota. Oh, and Lee. They don't know how to describe me again. One man came this weekend and said, Ah, but it take me one December here. <laughs> Those things are tools. God can give you five in a year. As long as don't keep them in your garage and be wasting time. You can change two, five cars in three months. If you don't like it, buy another one. Sell it, buy another one. Don't die. If it's giving you a headache, sell it, buy another one. God will give you capacity. For some of you, because you are poor, you will pack five there. Is that my woe? Man, I am a Lord your Sunday. That's the poverty of your fathers. Don't embrace it. They tie down capital. Buy cars, they drive once in seven months. Kosha Wambe. Oh, mommy. It's about the service. I hope that's not your dream. Eh? 300 cars packed here as a Lord. Is this not Babylon? That my hands are built. You just eat grass like beast. That's not God's plan. There are too many missionaries in Yola that need car. If you have too many, I do want to send them to somebody that needs it. Eh? It is more blessed to give. You are hearing it now. It looks simple. I'm waiting for that day. He said, ah, but you only keep air and more draw. Just in a bathroom, you party in your money, that's like, will you do party every day? Do you know people can keep a cloth they should have given? They will say, you know, there can be a day the weather will change. And that day will not come in five years. Then one day you wake up, that cloth will be out of fashion. Tell your neighbor, it's more blessed to give. Some of you are so blessed. Most of us here, we are so blessed that some of the things we don't count as anything. If he eats some people, they will still thanking God every day. There are people I give a thousand naira. The way they will be praying. If you are not careful, if you give your baby one thousand, check oaks. Can we get another? Because they are used to, to the blessings of God. But there are some people, if you give them five, I know artisans that come to greet me in this office. As the money can kill me more, oh, I keep going. She shed me. They are the pastor. Then they will be giving me advice. You will get it. Ellie, she will. He really, I said, the battle of that 1,000. Ah, it is worth it. Pastor, she gone. Connect on. Because for five days, there's no light to even do anything. And that is the one you used to buy credit without conscience, and you say you are not blessed. You are blessed. I said you are blessed. Some of you have already used 7,000 now for credit this month alone. To buy credit empty. Load. 24 gig. 50 gig. It's by your grace, oh Lord. It's by your grace, oh Lord. It's by your grace, oh Lord. It's by your grace that I am here. It's by your grace, oh Lord. It's by your grace, oh Lord. 
It's by your grace, oh Lord. It's by your grace that I am here. It's by your mercy, Lord. It's by your mercy, Lord. Stand to your feet, everybody. It's by your mercy, Lord. Let's celebrate the blessings of the Lord. It's by your mercy, Lord. It's by your mercy, Lord. By your mercy. It's by your mercy, Lord. Say by your mercy. By your mercy that we are here. Say it's to your glory, Lord. It's to your glory, Lord. It's to your glory, Lord. It's to your glory that I am here. It's to your glory. Say it's to your glory, Lord. It's to your glory, Lord. Say it's by your grace. Only by your grace. Only by your your hands and begin to thank for every blessings of God. Every little progress, every steady progress, give him praise. Give him praise for life. Give him praise for increase. Don't, the, don't let the enemy dry up your voice of thanksgiving. Don't let him dry up your soul. Lift your hands and give him glory. Oh, hallelujah. The garden of the Lord is well watered. The garden of the Lord is green. The garden of the Lord is fruitful. I am fruitful. I am refreshed. I'm blessed. I'm surrounded. And I lift up your name. I lift up your name. Yelebo shanda la bora talavadi. Himbala bola shanda diya dabala. I give you praise. I give you praise. Somebody thank God for a flourishing health. Remember the day months when you used to get sick every time. But now, for one reason or the other, something is flourishing in your health. You are eating your bread with quietness. Lift up your voice and give a praise.
scriptures. Ezekiel 28. From this one. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to the priest of Tyre, God says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted, you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the sea, yet you are a man. You are not a God. Though you set your heart at the heart of a God, behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and understanding, you have gained riches for yourself. You have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your riches. And your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, God says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, behold, I will bring strangers against you. The most terrible of the nations, they will draw their sword against the beauty of your wisdom. They will defy your splendor. The type of attack that defies a splendor will not attack you. Yeah. I've, I've used to some people when they get sick, that, that sickness is called a wasting disease. They will just be getting, you will not be able to compare the beauty. To, it's a wasting disease. I address every wasting disease to disappear from the bodies of people. Every cancer, every fibroid, everything that sap life from you. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. You are standing in God for somebody that the enemy has fasting death upon. By the word of the Lord, we command deliverance. We command deliverance. We command deliverance. Lord, let it be that the person will testify that in green, the language Congress, Life was restored to me. Receive life in the name of Jesus. Say, so you shall be thrown in the pit. You will die the death of the slain in the midst of the sea. Will you still say before him who slays you? I'm a God. But you shall be a man and not a God. What made him think he was a God? His riches. What made Aitofel think he was a God? His counsel of his counsel. What made Absalom think he was what he was? His beauty. All those things, they are nothing. They are the things the enemy can use to deceive people. What makes you who you are is when you are submitted to God and God Almighty can put his blessings upon your life. So Abakuk said, if the tree does not blossom, my faith is not moderated by the fruitfulness of trees. Even if it does not bring forth its blossom, I will praise you. Who is going to praise God tonight? Under every green tree, on the mountain top, in the valley low, God is God. And his blessings are the same forever. Lift your voice and give him praise. Give him praise. Our God is bigger than flourishing green trees. Our God is a God of fruitfulness. We have given you praise tonight and we continue to give it to you, Jesus. pray one final prayer open my eyes never to call what is cost blessed raise your voice and pray open my eyes never to call what cost blessed I to fail I'm gonna greet Judas and Absalom and Saul and open my eyes never to call what is cost blessed Not the true garden of God, not the mimicry, not the deception of Satan. Bring me to the garden you have planted that drinks from the rain of heaven, that drinks from the blessings of God. 
Don't let me ever call. Blessed, what is cost? This is my prayer tonight. Don't let me be enticed by passing riches. They show up the Jesus, all the glory of the world. Get him behind me, Satan. Get him behind me, Satan. Even if I'm just walking on my leg, I have peace of mind. I can lift up my voice with confidence. That's what is important to me. I can sleep at night without having oppression. And that's what matters most to me. Because what I don't have now, I will have later. I will be blessed more than what I think. I will not call what is cost. Bless. I worship the Lord. Where he has named, where he has revealed himself. Thank you, Jesus. I will worship Jesus forever. I will worship him every day. I will worship Jesus forever. I will worship him every day. Let it play. Every day.
receive our offerings tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe our declaration tonight is a fulfillment of the vision of the Pure Language Congress. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. In that day I will restore to the people a pure language and they will all come and serve the Lord with one accord. 
Nobody is stepping here to worship an idol. Nobody is stepping here to stand under every false illusion. With one declaration, we say we worship the Lord forever. Only the Lord will lift the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will be my God. He will be your God. He will be my hope. He will be your hope. And together we are walking in victory. If you believe it, shout!